Hey, hey, internet! Swag here. You've been figuring out some basics of circuitry, wondering where to go from there. Tried your hand at some vector math, but wondering what else is possible with it. Then hopefully this video will show you some cool ways on how to get started with vectors. Let's go check them out. One of the easiest gestures to check is if a player is holding their hands above their head. We do this by getting the get local player, get position, player left hand position and player right hand position chips, split the outcoming vectors up and compare their y coordinates with a greater than chip. Because the y axis is the up and down axis, when hand y coordinate is greater than head y coordinate, a player has their hand raised above their head. Do this for both hands and run the greater than comparison through an end chip and you can check if player has both hands raised above their head. Use this boolean value as an if chips condition with a 30 hertz and a velocity add and you can fly while raising your hands. Bonus tip! Another easy gesture is if hands are close together. Get the distance between player right hand and left hand, and if that is less than 0.2, then player is gesturing. Do you clamp vector gadgets to your trigger handle to get its forward or upwards direction? Well, stop wasting ink because there's two chips that do exactly that. The get forward vector and get up vector chips can get the directions of not just the trigger handle, but any shape. If you're ever confused on which direction is forward or up on your shape, check the pivot point. The green direction is up and the blue direction is forward. You can also get these directions from the player, where forward is the direction a player is looking and upward is up from the top of their head. A weird interaction of the distance chip is that if you enter a player's value, it measures the distance from the player's ground position. But a player's get position value, it measures from the player's head. Getting the distance between these two points thus gets you the distance from the player's feet to the center of their head. This can be useful, for example, to see if a player is crouching, see their height, or to subtract that distance from their Y coordinate so you can get a player's feet position for the sake of set position calculations. When you take position A and subtract it from position B, you get a direction that points from A straight to B. If A is a movable object and you move it in direction B minus A, then said object will move towards point B. Knowing all of this, and using a velocity set, we can move a physical object towards any point we want. Do make sure you use the correct velocity chip though. When you apply the same formula to a velocity add chip, instead of moving towards the point, it will orbit around the point. And because we do not account for resistance, it will orbit indefinitely. Speaking of... If you do apply resistance to a previous setup, you can simulate some pretty cool rubber band style behavior. You can do this by getting the velocity of your physical object, scaling it down to a fraction, and subtracting this value from your direction. This way, every execution, your object will lose a small percentage of its velocity and slowly come to a standstill. Experiment with what number works well for you. I tend to start around 0.02. If your object comes to a stop too quickly, lower the number. If it doesn't seem to ever stop, increase the number. And that's that. Hope these tips are useful on getting you started with vectors. As usual, if you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. But above all else, I hope you use your newfound knowledge wisely. And to see you in the next one. Bye.